said, welcome to the Horseman Podcast, an open form conversation about our passions, interesting topics with a free-flowing structure. Today we are excited to bring you episode 5 of season 2. Um, we're going to be discussing the photographs that we have taken over the years. Josh, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, man. I'm doing pretty well. It's, uh, it's going quite well in the month of December. That's good. I think it is going quite well as well, too. You know, it's it's kind of interesting with like you know the holiday season. You know, everyone's like taking pictures and stuff. You know, we have like, you know, you have the beautiful uh, landscapes, exactly. the family portraits, family portraits, the Christmas, Christmas cards, yeah, the Christmas trees, the wreaths, everything, the car, everything, and that I think it's, I don't know, there's something about the winter that makes taking photos like so much more aesthetic. It's a vibe. It's a yeah. It's it's a vibe. It's a vibe. And the thing about like taking photographs, like I guess, especially during the Christmas season, I don't know. I, I it's because you're saving memories. Yes. Yes. And um, you know, we we've uh, last some last season we talked about some of our photographs. We decided we'd bring it back to you again this season. Seemed to do pretty well. Mm-hmm. People like the photographs that we had. Um, so we're going to go over some of the photographs we've had. Um, I decided that I was going to go more of a storybook kind of way and kind of do some pictures that are near and dear to my heart um, that kind of have a little bit more meaning to me. Um, what kind of photos do you have for us? Um, this season I'm going to be bringing some of my surreal photographs and actually diving into some of the deeper meanings and deep cuts of these photographs. Um, are there any, like... I know there, there is something cool. I want you to try and explain this to like as a um, you know as an editor, mm-hmm. how you get like this kind of concept on your Instagram page. There is, I believe, about six photographs that make up. An oh, actual, the grid. Yeah, the grid. The grid photographs. Can you like? Yeah. I, I just want you to explain to everyone how exactly you do that because when I see that, I'm just like, jeez, I'm like, that's like, how, like, how do you even? How do you even get to the point where you've already made a grid with the photographs and you know how to place them? Um, so what goes into it is um, basically everything on Instagram is a one-by-one one photograph. So when I do take a photograph, when I put it into like an editing, I make sure it's in a 3 by 2 uh, aspect ratio. So it's just like 3 pixels across and 2 pixels up. So when I scale it and when I decide to crop each and every single one individually it'll all line up together that's like that is just like because i'm looking at them like i don't even know where to begin with that Mm -hmm. but like it is also like with some research because like i have no idea instagram frames are one by one i have no idea aspect ratio not dimensions let's be clear a little bit clear about that yeah clear about that um yeah and what photographs i choose to use um depending because there's a couple that are uh, just um, uh, one by one or or uh, three by ones and you know uh, three by twos you know three by three uh, or uh, th- three by three which equals one by one um, uh, photographs but what kind of like determines is I think a lot of it at the time was just mood and what I was feeling or it's just like I kind of sectioned them off you know like in big chapters of my life mm. um, because it's just like I know that we're always creating and sometimes I'm like I kind of want a fresh slate and I want to try something else or I'm going to be on this other topic for a while. So I'm going to be like I'm going to do one big grid photo across and then I'm going to do my set of photographs that I feel like kind of fit, you know, what what I'm going through at that time or what I'm trying to express once I have it, then sometimes I just leave it. And sometimes I get, you'll see on my profile, like a grid by grid uh, or a grid, huge grid photo and huge grid photo. Sometimes I just don't have any photographs to feel like I need to showcase. It's just like I just want to showcase these uh, different chapters, you know, going on right now. Mm. I think the first time I ever saw that is um, one of those grid ones is is back in 2018. Um, for those of you who like don't follow me on any of the social media ones, I'm a massive baseball fan. Mm-hmm. And um, my favorite baseball team is the Washington Nationals, which are located in Washington, D.C. At the end of 2018, one of our star players departed from the team for free agency. And uh, when he decided to depart, he decided to post a photo in the form of a grid form 
Um, it was kind of like thanking all the fans and, and stuff like that. And what I found really interesting was he put it in a grid, and he did one like he was. It was he did. Um, it was, I think it was six. It was either six or nine, but he did like one every day. So you were like, "What is what type of photo is he getting?" And as soon as I got like the bottom half, I was like, "Oh, he's didn't do the one because the photo is, he's walking into the dugout and his hands are like raised like this, you know, thanking the crowd whatnot." And that was the first time I saw it, and I was like, "How the, how did he, how did he even do that?" And you know, now I'm seeing it across like all of like content, like a lot of content creators platforms. And it's just a really cool concept you can do with photos. And that just speaks to the volume of creativity you can get with photos. Like, people take a photograph and they upload it to Facebook or Instagram, whatever. And then there's people who actually look for stuff. So I'm, I'm one of those people that I take a photo and I post to Instagram or, or, and, or Facebook. And I, I think you're, you're part of that line too, but you also are a concept person where you're looking. You have, you have an idea in your head. And you want to create it using photographs, so you look for it, or you create it yourself, and that is, that just adds to the whole like, how much creativity there actually is just surrounding that one, um, that one field. Yeah, and also to keep building on that as well too. As you keep doing it, you just start seeing, you know, there's different ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like you don't have to conform if if you feel that way to certain styles it's just like you can involve a style you can involve yourself and the biggest thing is just like to keep doing it yeah. uh, it's just like i have seen in my own conceptual photographs like uh from year to year it's just like i think i have topped or topped it and then all of a sudden it's just like i get a new idea and then i keep expanding um a good uh um example of this is i know i do uh, a couple of these uh, photographs with text messages that uh, go um back and forth uh, let's display one of these photographs let's go into my first conceptual photograph here please hold technical difficulties all right so we are going to go through a little darker one so you're going to see this photograph boom popped up on the screen it says i wish you were dead and then the text message says so do i and i think they like during this time of my life you know i think this is a, sometimes i don't think i take a lot of conceptual photographs then i swipe through my instagram i'm like there's quite a few here <laughs> Oh, I guess I didn't have a description for that. But uh, for this photograph, I wish you were dead, and um, uh, so do I. During that time, um, I was inspired by the show uh, uh, Mr. Robot, and we have this character, Elliot Alderson. You know, he's just, like, struggling, you know, with depression and all of that, and I think sometimes, you know, we all get frustrated at each other, and we'll throw, you know, that... Uh, Line is just like I wish you were dead, and sometimes, you know, a lot of people don't realize. On the other end, it's just like, yeah, so do I, you know. And I know I was going through one of those really rough times where it's just like, if anyone were to ask me if I was okay, I would say, no, I'm not okay. And I think that is completely, perfectly acceptable. And for me, this was my kind of my only way to cope with it. Which is just like. I'm going to showcase, you know, this very beautiful piece of artwork, you know. Shout out to uh, Sam Eisman, you know, for creating that show and showing that line. And then, like, I just took that line and it's just like, I'm going to make this, you know, my own to express, you know, some of my feelings, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm going through. Because I know sometimes I don't necessarily have the right words um, to say, but I know I could definitely showcase it off in a photograph. And um, it's just like I took a photograph, you know, of, a city skyline at night um, just made the lights you know very dim flipped it then put it to text messages and bam then then we got got the photograph um, nothing too crazy beyond that but what I'm going to say real quick sorry I have to pull this up if you are going through a very distressed time you should call the suicide hotline. Yeah. 
um, it is, or call a friend, you know, but let me give you guys the number real quick. We'll flash it up on the screen. So yeah, well. as well, too. Yeah. And, you know, here's, here's, here's there's an interesting part that you're bringing up that is, you know, we were talking a couple, I think it was like last week, we were talking about, you know, happiness and, and mental health and stuff like that. And, yeah. And one thing that we, we do promote, like, we do talk about, like, you know, a lot of heavy hidden stuff here on the podcast, but, you know, it's it's what the show is that needed to be said. And look, if you guys are going through stuff and it's not, and you don't think it's going well, reach out and talk to someone. I'm not I'm not kidding around. It really is, it, it, it's, it's very, very, very reassuring when you're talking with someone um, who is listening to you. Because a lot of people, you're, a lot of times you'll be talking to someone, they're not going to be listening to you. But, it is helpful to talk to someone. So yes, and uh, that number is one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five, and this is the suicide hotline. Yeah, we'll flash up on the screen too. Mm-hmm. Take it seriously, guys. Like uh, you know, um, it Just, was a, it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a darker photo, but there's uh, there's a quite a big meaning behind it, mm-hmm. and and that's kind of the thing that we're talking about. Is like there there there's a lot of meaning behind things. And um, it's not just one dimensional where right. it's just like this is a nice sunset. Like for me, when I take these conceptual photographs, even though some of them may be inspired from other places, this is also my way of like coping with everything that's going yeah. on with the world. And, you know, at that time, you know, it's just like th- this is what I needed to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like this is how I relate to people. Um, so. Again, you know, the suicide hotline for any of you guys who need help is going to be 1-800-273-8255. Yeah. Um, do you want to do another photograph? Yeah, me? let's let's go into that. Let, since we're going down this rabbit hole, I think it uh, showcases off this next one uh, pretty nicely. Do-do-do-do. No, look, now entering. Yeah, yeah. So that's a sick photograph. Yeah, so this is a, this is a fun one. Um, now entering. Uh, this was taken um back in. I actually edited this during COVID, during the lock midst of like April eighth. But I took this photograph in um two thousand and well took the assets of this photograph back in two thousand nineteen. And when we were all in lockdown, you know, in April of 2020, uh, I thought this was the perfect time to, you know, sit down and edit some of the concepts that I haven't even uh, touched. And this was one of them. I was inspired by the twi- like the spiral of the Twilight Zone. Oh, and, yeah. And I was like, oh, man. And everything kind of felt, you know, like going day to day. It almost felt like every day was like kind of entering some sort of weird twilight zone because like for me i worked in downtown seattle at the time during COVID, and it was super weird because i always felt like i was the only person i was walking on the city streets everybody was at home locked away you know working on the computers here i am just walking to work and there's no one you know on the streets no one on the light rail it's you know it's just like wow it's just like man it makes me feel like i'm the last man on earth and creating this concept how the swirl was created was actually taking, I took a photograph of a crosswalk and then I just added a twirl effect to it. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so creative. Yeah, and and that's how you got get that unique spin. And then I just took a photograph of me just laying on the ground, you know. And that's then, what that is? Yeah. Holy smokes. Uh, I knew, like... And me laying on the ground just spread my feet apart just a little bit and then i just adjusted the size Oh, now i can see okay now that I, now i'm looking closely at it, i can see the crosswalk mm-hmm. yeah that's crazy that you got that from like the just those two images yeah i was like i was i was like impressed i was like how the hell did he do that yeah I was like, that's that's really impressive yeah and then also at this time as well too um we're going to get a little bit of dark uh, into a little bit of darker uh, subject, so uh, please uh, be advised. You may be triggered. Um, I, I should have said that with the last photograph, but here as well too. I also felt like, as everybody's in lockdown, everybody's kind of spir- spiraling out of their con- control, you know. And um, there was like a lot of like, like I wasn't necessarily doing, like making some of the best decisions, you know, when uh, I was locked away. Um, 
You know, it's just like I definitely had uh, no self control when it came, you know, to alcoholism, you know, and then just recreational fun. And, um, like it got like kind of out of hand. Like, and we saw that happen across our, uh, the house that Josh and I uh, were living at. And it happened to come like into a lot of scary uh, situations. Mm -hmm. And, it was tough, and it, it almost felt like we were now entering, you know, kind of this very chaotic, very disturbed lifestyle where there wasn't really a minute to, like, relax. And it's just like we just didn't know what to believe in. The rabbit hole just kept going down. Yep. And it only seemed like the only way to get out was to actually keep going down this path until it was just, like, the end of our all of our guys' leases. We all hit it down our own separate ways, but even then, it just didn't end for us. I felt it was just another evo evolution of it where it's just like we're now, you know, um, not alone, but we're more with ourselves mm -hmm. outside of that place, which brings us to kind of the next photograph, kind of the healing process of it, um, which I like call the thread. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, I, and, I really like this photograph. Yeah, and this is the contrast. Um, with that, it's just like after, you know, going down this rabbit hole at some point, you know, I don't know whether it's the fall or whether it's, you know, you see like a glimmer of hope or like a glimmer of yourself. But it's just like after a while, it's just like you find something to hold on, even though you're going down this rabbit hole. And, you know, it's just like you find whatever that like small little bit of thread is and you kind of hold on to that. Because the complexities, you know, as you keep getting older, you keep getting smarter or you just start seeing things that you just can't explain anymore or your memory goes away. It all starts to kind of blur. But for some reason, whatever thread that you, whatever you may find, you know, it's just like you kind of hold on to that. And that's where, like for me, at least it's just like I found what I needed, you know, that little like thread, you know. Uh, to keep me going and to keep me going forward no matter uh, life's complexities. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, there's a lot of, like, photographs that I've taken um, in the midst of, like, hanging on by a thread. And, and mm -hmm. that's sort of like the photographs that I I do enjoy taking. Um, like, um, if you don't mind, I'm going to pop my, one of mine up there. No, um, absolutely. Those were the three that I really wanted to yeah. share, you know. See, like kind of like how it fe felt like in the beginning you know where yep. it's just like oh man is it a is any of this like kind of worth it too it's just like i'm i'm keep entering down this rabbit hole too it's just like you know what like even though we're going down this rabbit hole like it's not a bad thing you know it's just no. like there is some good you know that you can find hopefully within yourself you know to hold on to and hopefully you make that you know enough for you to keep going through yeah and I think, like, you know, going through, like, what we were talking about, it's, like, just talking to someone. You know, when I first moved to Washington State, um, the, the day after I moved to Washington State, I met my best friend. We've been best friends since day, since day one I've been in Washington. And uh, that brings us to the next photo that you see on the screen there. Um, the girl in the picture who's turning around laughing, that is my best friend. That's, that's Haley and then uh, her boyfriend, Derek. Um, those two are, are my Washington family. Um, those are my older sister and my older brother. Um, and uh, Derek got introduced pff, about a year and a half ago into my little like family area. Um, but Haley's been there since day one. She's been through all the ups and downs. She's been through... Um, the reason why I really like this photograph is I, I captioned it laughing in the wind. And the point about laughing in the wind is at some point you have to, you have to look at what's blowing at you and you just have to kind of laugh at it. You go, it's like, is it really that ridiculous that you're going through life and you have this thing that's chasing you and you really can't get rid of it? At some point, you have to turn around and you have to laugh at it because it's like, that's kind of funny that's just following me around. But when you take a deeper dive into it, if it wasn't for Haley and Derek, I don't know if I'd still be around. Um, and I mean that in a very serious way. Um, so I took this photograph. This is around, I'm going to say, the end of April 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so this is pretty early on into the whole lockdown area um and they said hey we're gonna come up and visit you one of these days so uh they came up and uh we walked around seattle took some photographs and it was really nice just um kind of getting out of the house and 
and uh, and doing something different with uh, with some people I hadn't seen in a very very long time. Uh, before I moved to the house, um, you know, Haley and I we were living in the same area, and so we saw each other a lot. But uh, when I moved to Seattle, she moved off to another location, and we didn't see each other at all for months. Um, and so that's why this photograph stands out to me. This is the first photograph I ever took of him. And in fact, this uh, photograph is actually taken moments before uh, one of my favorite photographs, which I've taken of Second Avenue. Um, that is the first photograph I ever edited with Greg. Mm -hmm. That was the first one I ever, uh, um, ever edited on Adobe Photoshop. We uh, probably spent what 30 minutes 30 no minutes? we spent like probably 45 to yeah, an hour yeah on that on, on the photograph because like i was still learning photoshop but you know we we go again to the talk to people and one of the great things that i love about Haley and derek is Haley Haley knows me extremely well and she knows that when i stop doing a certain thing which is telling my ridiculous dad jokes um that there's something that's going on and it's really important to me that I had someone in my life that was at that. So that's why that's one of my favorite photos ever um, is just the connection I have with those two. Those two are probably the most – two of the most amazing people I've ever met on the face of the planet. How in the world I nail, I, I got them as friends, I'll, it's beyond me. But I'm extremely happy for them, and I wish, I wish everyone could find a Haley and Derek in their life um, that, that they could call their best friends. Um, and then – we move over to the next photo. This is a little interesting one. There's not a whole lot behind it. It's just a really cool photograph. So earlier in 2020, we had. Um, do you remember the? Uh, we had the we had the fires come through. Yep. And all that smoke. Well, one night, so I was working security. Um, I was working graveyard shift, and one night we're watching the cameras and we're like, it's getting really hard to see out there. And I'm like, man, the fog's really rolling in quick. It was fog and smoke combined to the fact where. The light you see off in, in, if you're looking at the helipad of the photo and you look off just to the right, that's where the space needle's supposed to be. You can't see the space needle, and the space needle in that photo is about 100 feet away from me. That's how thick the smog, the, the, um, the fog and the smoke were. Like, it was just, what in the world is this? I'm like, I was like, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It was stuck around for like three days. Um, that that uh, particular spot... Uh, was the spot of many Space Needle photos um, that I've taken. Uh, I had a lot of fun um, with that view. And I told my coworkers this, and I think I've told Greg this a number of times, I never got tired of that view, and now I even miss it. I miss seeing the Space Needle almost every single day. I and mean, that's just a cool kind of feature you can have with your job. I mean, it's right across the street from where I used to work. Um, and kind of speaking of that, uh, the next photo that you guys are seeing up here, this is, uh, this is where I used to work. And um, it was uh, it was probably some of the best. It was probably like the two best years of my life. I want to say um, there was a lot of growth that happened in that job. Uh, I met a lot of amazing people. I had a lot of really good memories. But also for a time, it was also one of the darkest places I've ever been to. Um, you know, I'm not gonna knock on like a whole lot of people here. I'm not gonna name names. I'm not gonna say things like that. But you know, when you're surrounded by a whole lot of negative people, a lot of the time, you know, 40, 50 hours a week. Kind of hits you. It kind of really hits you really hard. And it's not like they're bad people. It's that I'm one of those people that I, I don't like to complain unless I, unless I have found a solution. Because then it's not really complaining. And I got surrounded with a lot of complainers at that job. And I'll admit, I did my fair share of complaining too. But it doesn't mean I didn't, it doesn't mean I, I didn't like it. And, um, you know, I'm, this, that was not one of the reasons why I moved on from that job. But that job was probably some of the best two years of my life. Um, I still have the connection from that job. Um, I reach out to them all the time for, you know, just some memory flashbacks every once in a while. But I would say that that building was my home for like two years. I, I remember during the house, um, I mean, there were weeks where I was like, I was working there like... Yeah. 60 hours a week or something like that it was more than that yeah uh, i think you did one 80 hour a week yeah and we were all just wondering like where's josh <laughs> yeah i kind of like disappeared off to the face mm. of the planet because you know because was... every friday night i think for some of you that are tuning in every friday night during uh the early days of covid uh we would have a dinner yep um uh, to bring some sort of normalcy you know just like oh friday night we're all going to get together 
have like a little potluck. But I just remember one week we just did not do it, and it was because Josh had been working over eighty hours, yeah. and we just didn't want to push it. You know him over oh the edge. God. That week was like that was probably one of the most exhausting weeks. I mean, you literally get up, go to work, go home, go to sleep, get up, go to work, go home, go. To sleep. It was like that. It was, I think, because um, you were pulling all doubles. I was pulling whole, doubles that entire that week. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was crazy. I never did that again. I got close to it. I you think, got close to it a couple of times, but yeah. that was the one where it's just like you hit eighty hours, mm. and it was like whoa. I think um, I want to do a little bit of memory reflection real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of keep it on a happier note. You know, one of the one of the cool things was. Um, so where my uh, room was in the house was you had the front door, and then you had the, the front door entered in the living room. And on the left side of the living room, there was a closet, and then there was my door. So my door directly led out into the living room. And what, the kind, of, what kind of a cool thing was, was that uh, when I was getting ready for work, Greg and a couple of the roommates would be out in the living room. And at the time, I had this thing where a half hour before work, I started my little like music session. So I would be listening to music in there, and uh, by the time I got dressed, I opened up the door, and you guys are all just standing there, just like, you're just listening to music in there, and I'm like, yeah, and I dance too, and I just started dancing like, oh my god. <laughs> but it was, it was kind of cool, it was that like, was funny. it was, that, that was a pretty cool moment, because it was like, and also what was really nice too, was the fact that you guys all said goodbye to me when I walked out the door. Yeah. Or not goodbye, you guys said, I was like, oh, I'll see you later. You know, have a good one, have a good day, a good day at work, and then you guys went on with your night, and I went to work. It's like, yeah. but that was really, really cool that I left, and like my roommates actually said, like, "Hey, see you later, have a good one at work." Like that rarely happened when I was living in Federal Way. Like that didn't happen a whole lot of times. Like, bye. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, which kind of brings us to this last, the last photo I have. So um, the photo that you see here is a picture of a softball field that's down in Olympia. Um, before I moved to Washington, I played slow pitch softball like crazy. I was playing five, six days a week, 11 months out of the year. And even in Virginia, yeah, I've played slow pitch softball in the snow before. Oh, my God. It's, it, 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 it sucks, but I've done it before. And basically, my whole thing was it was, um, it was a really nice opportunity for me to go out and have some fun with my friends um, and the league that I was in. But also, it was a really nice athletic competitive moment um, where I could put, you know, the very few athletic skills I have on the field. And it was just, it was fun to just play softball. So uh, a couple week, weekends after I moved um, from Seattle to where I live now, uh, I got the opportunity to go down to Olympia and play uh, three, game, three games once I got the opportunity to play a tournament in Olympia. And <laughs> I tell you what, you know, once you... When you've been playing softball for a long time, and then you kind of take a like a year, like you can't always take like three years off, mm-hmm. and you don't work out, and you're not like in shape at all. When you try to go back to playing like a tournament, and you try to go balls to the wall, I couldn't walk the next day. Like my hips hurt so bad. But this photograph here was captioned, "I've missed you, old friend," because the softball field or the baseball field in general was a huge part of me growing up. And the reason why I'm a huge baseball fan nowadays, and uh, it's the team aspect. It's having fun with my teammates. You know, after uh, one of the games, uh, we had one game, and then we had a break for like two and a half hours when we went to a bar down the street. We ordered food, we ordered drinks. It was a great time to, you know, just kind of bond with the team because I'd never met any of them before, and instantly liked all of them because all of them I felt like they. Um, I kind of I don't know what is it. When I went down there, I was like, oh my god, I'm with my people again, because. It was a lot of the same people that I played softball before. You know, a lot of like ex college guys, minor leaguers, um, you know, people that play professionally. Um, and then you get, you know, the people who just kind of play for fun. And, and that's, that's why I love softball because it's, it's, it's a lot about fun. So that, the image that, that's there means so much to me from like just a personal happiness kind of tent, uh, like, like a standpoint, I guess. No, like how we were saying, you know, through all these photographs, you know, there's sometimes a deeper cut to the meeting yeah. than just a beautiful photograph. Yeah, the, the fact that I was able to step on a softball field and play softball for the first time in three years, I didn't care that I couldn't walk the next day because I was so happy that I finally got to go back and play and, and do something that I loved 
in a completely a new different area with different people and you know when you've played before you kind of get this bond with the game and you're able to enjoy a lot more because you're like yeah I, I, this is this is for this is a familiar aspect to me and um yeah it was a lot of fun i got to play uh, we got eliminated after three games but <laughs> you know uh i didn't really care i don't when it comes to slope and i don't care if i win or lose i mean i do care but at the end of the day i don't care if i win or lose because i had a lot of fun now when i'm playing i want to win but when i'm done playing it didn't matter if i win or lose because you know, in life, it doesn't matter if you win or if you lose because there's no winning or losing in life. You just go through it and you make the most of it that you can. You make the most memories. You learn as much as you can. And I think the best like possible life I, I, I could – the best possible life advice I could give to anyone is just do exactly – nothing which, like <laughs> not do exactly nothing do exactly what you want to do like i i am a chase to dreams person but it's it's basically like just do what you want to do because at the end of the day is there any harm in doing what you want to do because there is harm in not doing what you want to do yeah and there's it's i'm a um over the years my mentality has changed to the point where I really, I honestly, I really don't care. In quotations, I really don't care what people think because at the end of the day, someone who lives 6,000 miles away from you um, is should not be the person that gets to judge your lifestyle uh, based on their lifestyle. And the photographs you take, the movies that you create, the games that you play. Um, Whatever you decide to engage yourself in. Yeah. Go balls to the wall. Do it. 100%. Go all in. Go, because go all in. Because at the end of the day, if you don't give it your all, you can only play the what if game. But if you gave it your all, you're like, what? Ah. There's never an if. Eh. There's, there's, there's no blueprint at all whatsoever. Um, Why would you want a blueprint anyway? Exactly. Why would They're you not blue? blue anymore. They're not? No, like... Sorry, I work for a trade a trade school, and the blueprints that we have are white. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure, yeah, yeah. I'm like, they're not blue, well, the, man. Okay, well, the construction that I work for had actual blue ones, so. <laughs> it had, it had a machine that was colorized to print out the actual, like, blueprint to the thing. And, it, it like, it, you put the white paper in, it came out blue. It's like, you guys realize how much color you guys are wasting? <laughs> but, um. We hope you guys enjoyed uh, this episode. We're just showing off our photographs and our concepts and our uh, advice. So, um, yeah, the biggest thing is if you are in distress and you feel like you need to, we're going to say this one last time because mm -hmm. I feel like this is very important. If you feel stressed or you need someone to talk to and you all know who, it's okay to call the suicide hotline. And that is 1-800-273-273. A two five five. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed. We will see you guys next week. As always, have a good one. Bye.